Hey everybody, Joshua Hayes here, and we are here at Standing Rock Live again. And uh, I just keep running into uh, quite amazing people out here, and the stories are all uh, all very moving and inspirational. And I wanted to uh, share with everybody um, my new friend here, Mark, and uh, he's going to talk about why he's here at Standing Rock and why he made the decision, um, you know, to leave uh, where he was at and what he was doing to come out here to Standing Rock, and uh, and you know why why he found this to be so important to take his time and energy to come out here so I'm gonna go ahead camera around here all right hey mark <laughs> all right so thanks mark so much for uh, for being here with us today and uh, you're telling me um, you know first where are you from I'm from Reno Nevada so Reno Nevada so I'm sure it's much warmer there not really <laughs> not really <laughs> so uh, so mark as you can see mark is a Vietnam veteran and uh, he was here, and he was telling me his story about uh, why he decided to come out here to Standing Rock. So, do you want to tell everybody else, Mark? Yeah, I came out here to stand in solidarity against the fascist state of North Dakota. Uh, because I am a vet, I felt uh, after 12 months in Vietnam that, uh, that my government, that uh, my dad risked his life for in Pearl Harbor when he was 33 years old and survived and brought me to life. Um, I was a flag-waving, patriotic American, and uh, I had a rude awakening in uh, Vietnam and realized that this is really about money and corporations, and I've had a really bad taste in my mouth about that ever since. And that's what's exactly going on here, and pretty much have decided that uh, I'm really not done serving. I was happy to serve my country, but I was really unhappy about the way it went. So I'm back again, 47 years later, uh, to stand up for Standing Rock. Very awesome, Mark. Can you, uh, I know a lot of people have kind of talked about how, uh, you know, not only that we're here to protect the earth and, um, you know, to come together, but we're also having uh, some personal healing as well. Um, can you talk about some of your experience? Yeah, when I was 14, uh, a couple of rookie cops uh, pulled me over for riding my, uh, my brother's uh, motor scooter uh, at 4.30 in the morning and uh, good enough they should have uh, stopped me for doing that taking me home to my dad but what they did is they uh, immediately cuffed me uh, threw me in the mud and pointed a 357 magnum at my head uh, for a 14 year old that was a, a traumatic experience that experience stayed with me I've had an authority figure problem ever since and I've been screaming matches with several police and sheriffs over the years over certain scuffles and I've never been arrested but I realized that this, I had, this had to change in my heart before I could come here. And I've been working on this for a very, very long time. And I actually got a citation in Bozeman, California, bringing friends out here uh, about three weeks ago. My heart rate didn't go up when the lights came on. I was completely calm. And I realized uh, this offer was, officer was absolutely professional and um, wrote me the ticket. We went on our way and I, and I could feel the healing process in that moment because I did not get riled up with the authority figure and realized I, I was ready to come here and, and, to, and to be arrested and test my mettle, which is what happened on the 15th of November. So what happened on the 15th of November? Do you care to share that? I uh, went out on an action, uh, spur of the moment. I lined up at the south gate and I just uh, jumped in the car uh, with some friends and uh, headed out to the railroad tracks. I think there was going to be a prayer at a man camp in support of the women that have been disappeared and raped at man camps over the years. I uh, was standing in front of the railroad tracks. Uh, the police made a line across the other side of the railroad tracks and wouldn't let us pass on public property. And uh, so there was a standoff and uh, eventually they crossed the tracks, asked us to back up. And uh, I was complying with the, uh, with the officers, uh, backing up, backing up. and. Um, <laughs> the officer actually thanked me for my service. I was wearing this hat and like 20 seconds later uh, three of them jumped me, uh, drug me across the railroad tracks, threw me on the ground and cuffed me and turned me over to uh, other officers to put me on the bus and uh, take me to the booking. So um, so you said that uh, you were telling me earlier that you're saying your mantra and to keep yourself calm yes, during that I attack? Yes, I was looking forward to being arrested. I was completely at peace with what was going on, uh, I was thrown down to the ground and, and I, I kept chanting, uh, peace, love, compassion, peace, love, compassion, until they had me back on my feet again. I really don't remember having eye contact with, uh, 
the, the officers that arrested me. But uh, I found it such a great healing experience to get over this angst I have uh, for uh, uniformed authority. There are people just like me. Um, they've taken a different path. Uh, we need to open their hearts. We need to send love and prayer to them in order to to at least bring them to a neutral space so that they can think about what it is they're doing. Um, I understand there's some officers who've turned in their badges, so it's working and, and they are very fearful. And you can tell by the fear that we're winning. And that's, that's heartening to me to see the strong emotions in the officers on the other side. They're no longer just doing their job. They are now afraid of themselves. They're afraid of what they might have to do or what they're being told to do now. They're, they're afraid of their, their hard hearts. They mm -hmm. need to change their hearts. Uh, they, they're doing more than this, just their job. They're, they're doing the bidding of an evil force. And um, it's a personal decision to decide not to do that. Just like when I was in Vietnam, I had to make a decision um, uh, to register as a CO instead of go forward with the uh, with the program that they wanted me to do. All right, uh, awesome, Mark. Uh, so I just want to take a second here and just uh, ask everybody to share this video while we're live here. Um, the more shares we get, the more views we get, the more people find out what's going on at this place out here. Um, as you can see, the camp is getting larger and larger by the minute. Um, there's cars coming in. There's been a steady flow of cars uh, for the holiday season. Um, so thank you guys all so much uh, for tuning in. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, Mark can't see this right now, but thank you guys all for the blessings for Mark and um, lots of uh, thank you for your service and lots of uh, veterans unite and we're all here, um, you know, and, and there's more veterans coming. Um, and there's more peaceful people coming here with their heart and their compassion and we're coming here to make a difference uh, in this physical world by bringing in uh, what is uh, what is given to us and what is all around us in the spirit world. So uh, I had just one more question for Mark before we uh, jump off of here, but I just want to ask everybody again to share. And when you share, uh, hashtag Standing Rock, hashtag No Dapple. Um, that's how everybody's uh, catching up on these feeds and and coming on here. So hashtag uh, Standing Rock, hashtag No Dapple, hashtag your local news agencies so this video gets out. And uh, I got one more question for Mark here. Um, Mark, will you uh, will you talk about the story behind your uh, your Vietnam veteran hat? Yeah, I, uh, I never wore myself as a veteran on my sleeve ever. I uh, pretty much kept it to myself, except for really close friends. Um, like I said, I was proud to serve, but really disappointed in the way I had to do it. Um, and I, I've never um, worn my, my veteranship on my sleeve. In 47 years, I've never worn a pin or a badge or anything. Uh, and uh, this Veterans Day, a very close uh, woman friend of mine, uh, purchased this hat for me at my request and gave it to me as a gift to come out here to stand for Standing Rock because all of a sudden now I'm in a struggle again hmm. and this struggle feels much much better and I can I can do this struggle in a peaceful manner uh, which is what I'm about hmm. and can you can you speak to the freedom here at this camp it's it's an amazing freedom it uh, I'm not stressing about this. I'm I'm done being angry, and I'm done being fearful. And this this is just such an uplifting experience to be able to come here and do this. Not just for me, but for all everybody who knows me and everybody who's giving me spiritual and financial support. This is this is the most amazing process uh, of self healing and. Uh, a good expectation of the outcome of this. Absolutely, thank you so much. Um, is there anything else you want to share with everybody? Uh, no, you about worn me out. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mark. I really appreciate you, sure. and uh, proud of you for being here. Yeah. And uh, I'm thankful that you're a veteran, and that, uh, I want you to make sure you keep wearing that hat and be proud of you know your service and what you've done. Peace, love, and compassion. <laughs> Peace, love, and compassion, everybody. So one more little pan here, Standing Rock, in this beautiful sunny day, and. Uh, my oh my we are so blessed to live today together with our hearts open so thank you guys so much once again share this video and uh let let the truth get out bless you all peace